I think that's going to be my non-dominant hand. Okay, so this hand is going to stay sterile, and this hand is going to be unsterile. Because I have to work. I have to put, move that gown, and I have to spread the labia. So I spread the labia, and I... Okay. Is that your little baby? No. So. <laughs> All right. I've got this with my betadine on it. I'm spreading my labia, and what I'm doing then is I'm going to pick up a cotton ball and I'm going to go down one side and clean it. I'm going to take it and did drop you, it there. Did you go down to the rectum or before the rectum? No, you just go down and clean the labium, okay? Because that's not going to stay sterile, all right? You want to make this area right here where you're going with that sterile catheter as clean as you can make it. And remember, you've already washed it some. And so then you take another one, go down the other side, Take another one, go down the middle. And you can go down as far as you want. That's not, it's important to keep it clean, okay? And try to get it as clean, because it's not going to be sterile per se. Go down the middle. Go down the middle. And with this last one, you're going to drop everything in there. And where students forget is they put that tweezers back in their kit. And you can't do that, okay? So you can gently pick up that and do that. But once you're done cleaning, into the bag it goes, okay? So now I'm ready to do the in, to insert it. And I'm going to take my sterile hand. I'm going to gel it up here where I put my KY jelly or the lubricant. Get it all gelled. And now students get upset because the box is falling. It's slipping around and all of that. Don't get upset. That can go wherever you want. You want to keep this out of as clean as you can. And you don't want to let go of the labia. And it doesn't matter where that goes. And then you insert it here in this meatus without touching the labia. And it's hard to do now because I'm hung up. Okay. And I've got to keep this as sterile as I can. Now, it came back out. I can't put it back in. All right. So. I have a new kit, and I've got it prepared. <laughs> <laughs> How come this one's going so bad? Do you it mind if I move the leg so huh? that they can see. Do you mind if I move the leg so no, they can, you can. see? It, that's not Because you can't see the. You can't see where she's inserting. Well, it's the me either, so. No. Does that help? <laughs> I don't think so. Got it all gelled up, all clean, wow. ready to go. And you would have to start again. You would have to take your cotton balls, you would have to put it up because that came out, okay? So. And you quit wobbling. Thank you. Now, why do you think it came out? What, what because uh, my syringe got hung up on the plastic oh, okay. uh, container there. Because it has to come with it. Okay. And so, quit wobbling. Thank you. you. Put it in. And then you have to get your fingers to work. And once you get it in, two to three inches, you get urine. Then you put it in an inch further. Okay. And then, once you get urine, now you've got the sterile part, the clean part, everything together. So you can go ahead and touch this. Because this is going to stay outside the body. It's not going to stay sterile. So you can touch that and anchor it with your hand. And, and it's in as far as it's going to go. Is that no, uh-uh. No. You can put it all the way into the hub if you want to, up to the Y here. But um, you should get urine before that, all right? But every body is different. The urethra may be longer than two to three inches. Once you get urine back in this tubing here, then you want to insert it one inch for more to make sure you have that little ball that you're going to inflate inside the bladder and not in the urethra. Okay. So at this point, you, you would have already seen urine. Yes, uh huh. If this was a real life world. All right. So then I can inflate my balloon. Now, if I let go of it, what's going to happen? It's going to come back out. So you just have to keep it pressed. You can go ahead and touch this and take that off, and it will stay in there. All right? So you can see now that it's in there fine. So what caused the problem was that this was hooked onto this. Okay? And sometimes you just have to give it a good yank and let's let everything fly. All right? So this would go in my trash. I don't have to worry about being sterile now because the sterile part is over. You're going to take the bag and you're going to drape it on the bed, and they can put their legs down, okay, they're saying, and you can kind of cover them up a little bit, 
so that the poke hole is not hanging out. And then you want to put this on the side of the bed. And you don't hook it on the bed rail, you don't hook it on the mattress, you hook it on the bed frame on a non-movable part. Then you're going to, uh, and these are horrible, so. And you've got urine coming in here. And you take a look at it, and it's nice and maybe kind of a golden yellow. Because you have to chart that, that you've got the golden yellow. And you hook this on the bed. <coughs> And then you take this and you loop it around a little bit because this all goes by gravity. And you'll hook it onto the sheet. And then you tape this. Now they don't use tape anymore. But on a female you would tape it on the inside of the thigh. But they, what they use in the hospitals now is a Velcro like strap thing that goes around your grinning so mm -hmm. you know. Because you don't want this to just flop around. Because what's it going to do? It's going to irritate the urethra, okay, here, and so as a result then you tape it down, on a man you, you would tape it up here, closer up here because they, their anatomy is a little different, all right, you would clean up your mess, and you need to document, you need to document what, oh my gosh, the color of the urine. The color of the urine. Polka. Yes. Yeah. The color, how much you got out, you know. Consistent. Well, of course, it's going to be liquid, but yeah. sometimes clarity. it might. The clarity of it and how the clear it is and, stuff, and that. And, and you're going to document that. But what else do you have to document? That you performed a sterile I'm sorry? That you performed a sterile test. Yeah. With strict sterile technique. Okay. But you also have to document what size uh, catheter you put in. Oh, the maids or the housekeepers come and take in the trash away. What size did I put in there? I don't know. Yes, you do. Because on the ends, on your inflate here, where you did it, on down here, it tells you what size it is. And it says it's a 14 French. So if the trash has been taken out, you forgot what size you put in there, then you can come back and look. Anybody can come and look and say, okay, they've got a 14 French. And this one says 5 cc's, and that stands for the amount of air, uh, water, excuse me, sterile water that you would put in the balloon. But we put 10 cc's in without any trouble. And that's why when you take a catheter out, when the doctor orders it out, that it's important to know about how much water, you, uh, sterile water you put in that balloon, okay? And then when you take it out, do you deflate? Yeah, we're going to get to that. Oh. You'll see I'm still dressed. <laughs> You'll see I, yeah, you just put your foot on the end of the bed. And you know. <laughs> oh, my God. No. And that's why, that's why uh, 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 evidence-based practice has shown, uh, for some reason, and it's happened here in Amarillo with the doctors, with uh, patients that have had catheters at the bone. Uh, as I said, in the old days, you used to inflate the balloon a little bit to make sure it was patent. But now they do not recommend that because we've had trouble even here in Amarillo with our balloons that they won't deflate once you've inflated them. And so they've had to call a urologist to come in and they take a little long thing and they stick it up there so they can pop that balloon, okay? And that's an added charge, etc. So now we do not uh, test the balloons, okay? Because once we've inflated them, we don't want to deflate them until they're ready to come out. Yes, ma'am. How do you determine the, the French size for the patient? Well, if you have a very large patient, they'll probably use a larger catheter. Uh, what happens is, is people, all people are different. And if it starts leaking, they may need a bigger one. So you may have to take the old one out and put a bigger one in there. They go up to 30 French, which is a pretty good size tube. We use 30 French tubing a lot of times for rectal tubes and put it up past the sphincter and keep it in so that if they've got liquid diarrhea, it goes into a Foley catheter bag. So is there a rule of thumb? Yeah, you usually use a 14 to 16, 18, <laughs> you know. It's just, a, you kind of look at the size of the patient. Now, I would not put this into a child. You'd have to use a real little one for that. See what I'm saying? So they come in all different sizes. Right. And the higher the number, the bigger around it is. If it's an 18 gauge needle or an 18 French, it's going to be pretty big, I think. Are we doing this test on There's a spy in our midst. <laughs> are we doing this test on a male and a female or just a female? Just a female. All right. All right.
Now, with a male, what you have to do with a male, if you have a male patient, and you will get them, okay, is that you have to, uh, they, it's nice because you don't, ha you, they've only got one hole. Okay, you don't have to figure out where to put it. And so you have to clean it three times around and make sure if they are uncircumcised, you have to pull the foreskin down and clean good there. You have to wash it with soap and water and then clean it with your uh, hydrogen peroxide if they're allergic or with their uh, betadine. And then you would cat them and then you have to replace that foreskin, okay? If you don't, it's going to strangulate and it's going to cause major, major problems. So what you would do then is you'd cat them and, um, and it's the same principle. With the male, though, they have a much further way to go because they have a prostate to go through, etc., until you get to the bladder. And so it's five to six inches until you get urine, and then another inch forward, the same as with the female. And then, uh, and it usually is a little more irritating to a male than it is to a female, okay, because you're going much further with that calf, okay, with that uh, non anatomical uh, foreign object, okay. Uh, usually, sometimes with the male, especially older ones, you might want to ask them if they have prostate problems because sometimes they do and you'll have trouble getting it in. And so sometimes they'll order a special catheter that has a little harder tip on it for a male just to make sure that uh, you only have to do it once, okay? Because it's much more irritating on the patient. So. And grasp the penis pretty firmly, otherwise it'll slip right out of your hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to start all over. And that's not a good thing to have to do. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's been a week, and the, you've got orders to take the catheter out, and so you would come in, and the, the uh, patients are usually pretty excited about that, and so um, you would get a 10cc syringe and a towel, okay, and then you would put the, the uh, towel down here, all right, and you're going to provide privacy, of course, and then you would find your syringe. And um, then all you have to do is uh, put it on the inflate here, and you'll see once you get it on there. Oops, this is not going to work. This one is bad for some reason. Okay, okay. If you put it on there, the water will start coming out by itself usually. So I let it gently come out. You can pull it if you're in a hurry. And once it quits coming out, I always kind of give it a little tug to make sure all the water is out because it's still inflated. That rubber is inflated and it's or latex or whatever it is, non-latex, and it's going to be irritating because it's got a little rough edge on it. And so you'll go ahead and take that and then you'll tell your patient to, uh, on the count of three, you want them to take a deep breath and blow out like a birthday candle. And so you go one, two, three, and they blow, and then you just slide it out onto the paper, you wrap it all up. One thing you want to do probably beforehand, if, it's the cat, if the bag's really full, you might only want to empty it and measure it. You'll empty it and measure it for sure. Now, put it on the INO, and then you have to instruct your patient that, um, that to call you when they have to go, uh, and, um, because you need to see the first um, uh, urine that they, they uh, how much it is and what color it is, you need to be sure they go a lot uh, enough uh, the first time. Um, historically and personally, um, the minute it comes out, they feel like they have to go, and they may have to, okay? And you'll offer them an opportunity to go, but they have eight hours to go, okay? So you want to, and, and they have to call you the first time, and they've got about eight hours to go. You don't want to threaten them and say, well, if you don't go in eight hours, we're going to put it back in. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean. <laughs> um, uh, the other thing is, I thought of something I forgot when you put it in, and now my mind's Take gone. It to the leg. No, Take I did it all the that. When you put it in. Yeah. And you leave them in a safe, comfortable environment, but they're cold light at hand. Yeah. Um, what did I forget? I, I wasn't, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. It was something that's on your sheet. Record the output? No. Uh, the documentation will do that and talk about that. Oh, shit. You'll think about it tonight. I'll send you <coughs> Okay? All right. Any questions?
Then what you need to do is 